Hi everyone, thank you for watching. I am Shannon and I'm back in my Touring Plans shirt talking about the best and worst rooms. And today we're talking about Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. So Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort Oh, first opened on July 1st, 1996, and it is set to reopen. So I'm recording this in May, 2021, and it is set to reopen on July 2nd, 2021, after being closed for the shutdown. So we're very excited. Um, Disney's Boardwalk Villas is one of our favorite resorts. We have stayed on the inside once, just for one night, and we found it very, very comfortable. So it is a great resort. Great to see it um, reopening and hopefully that's going to bring some life back to the boardwalk. But now let's get into the different room categories at Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. Okay, so what I could find out is that Disney's uh, Boardwalk Inn has 378 rooms and several different categories. Again, this is one of the resorts that doesn't have a category for king bed or two queen beds. So you really have to kind of do a research. And if you do want a king bed room, um, touring plans can help with that, but you may have to forgo what location you want if you really prefer a king bed. You kind of just have to know which one you prefer because you cannot book a king bed category, except there is a couple that do have a king bed, but I'll explain what those are. So first up is the standard view, and this is basically views of Disney's boardwalk in gardens, leisure pool, or the parking area. And this sleeps up to five adults. Um, then the garden view, which is views of Disney's boardwalk in gardens, obviously, um, also sleeps up to five adults. The water view, and this is views of Disney's boardwalk or Crescent Lake. And I guess if you have a view of the boardwalk, you're probably viewing Crescent Lake. And again, sleeps up to five adults. All of these have, um, there's a couple that have two queen beds, um, two queen beds and a day bed, or one king bed. So they all have different, different types of layout. So that is where touring plans can definitely help out. Um, next up is what is called the outer building garden room. And I think on touring plans is listed as the garden suite. And these are interesting because these are basically, I think they're kind of like honeymoon suites. They're two stories. Um, they only sleep two adults and they're views of Disney's, Disney's boardwalk inns gardens or leisure pool and it's only one king bed so it's basically a double level um, it's kind of like a loft and the king bed is on the loft and really unique um, and you have like a little garden area in front it's really really cool um, I think it's great if you are staying you know as a couple or going on a honeymoon this is a great you know way to you know stay I've curious as to there's only a couple of them um, I've always wanted to just take a tour of them because I think they're just really adorable so that's kind of one of the uniques because it only sleeps two adults and then you have a two-bedroom suite and this is views of Disney's boardwalk in gardens or leisure pool and this sleeps up to nine adults and then there's the Sonora VP suite and this is views of Disney's boardwalk and Crescent Lake and has two queen beds and sleeps up to six adults. Now I believe there is a presidential suite, but when I looked on Disney's website, it didn't have that listed. So I believe there's a, a presidential suite. It's showing on touring plans, but I couldn't find it on Disney's website. So it looks like maybe right now it's not bookable. I'm not sure. Um, then the rooms and suites with clubs level service. That is a standard view club level, views of Disney's boardwalk in courtyard or leisure pool. Um, it either is gonna have two queen beds and a day bed or one king bed or two queen beds. So those are just different layouts. They sleep up to five adults. And then the interesting one is the deluxe room club level. And these are views of Disney's boardwalk. And this is, it says deluxe rooms are larger than the standard room club level. And these sleep up to six adults. So um, you can get a little bit more. And those are club level um, categories. Now, right now club level is closed, but I do expect with the restrictions lifting that club level hopefully will return in the near future. So, so those are all the room categories at Disney's Boardwalk Inn. So now let's head over to the Touring Plans website so we can look at which are the best and worst rooms that you may want to request at Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. As always, we're going to start on TourningPlans.com's page dedicated to the resort, and this is Disney's Boardwalk Inn. Here you can find all the information you could, you know, 
possibly want uh, about Disney's Boardwalk Inn. There's the map, which we'll be going over later, what you can expect in the room, some pictures of the room, floor plan, and uh, different the, the different dining options. And here we go. Um, this now is now a Boardwalk Ice Cream that just recently opened. And this resort, as we stated, is set to reopen on July 2nd. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual resort. So here we have the resort map of Boardwalk Inn. So this right here, the one in white, is the Boardwalk Inn, and these two buildings right here are the Boardwalk Villas, the DVC portion. That is a separate video that I've already done, so if you're interested in the Villas portion, definitely take a look at that vid video. And this we're gonna be looking here. So this is the quiet pool for the Disney's Boardwalk Inn, and then this is the quiet pool for the villas portion and then this is what used to be referred to as the creepy clown pool now it's mickey and friends so the clown has been removed and this is where the slide and there's also a little playground as well as a little kitty pool area this right here this building right here is the community hall so even if you aren't staying at the villas portion you still can use that if you are staying at disney boardwalk inn so that, just so you know, that is right there. Obviously this is the bus stop. So the bus stop um, is pretty close to the Boardwalk Inn area. It is a walkway. Um, and obviously here is the convention center. This is the lobby. Now the lobby is on the second floor here at the Boardwalk. So keep that in mind. So if you're on the second floor, you are on the same floor as the lobby. This is what is referred to as the Village Green. So this is where they have the movies on the lawn. They'll have some activities over here. The um, general store is right around here. Big River Grill is right around here, as well as Jelly Rolls and Atlantic Dance Hall are all over on this side. Flying Fish is right here on this corner. The Boardwalk Bakery, the Boardwalk Ice Cream, ESPN. Um, uh, the dining is right there whenever it reopens. So all of that is right here. So um, that just kind of gives you an overview of Disney's Boardwalk Inn. Also forgot to mention here obviously is the marina and then obviously you see here this is the walkway to Epcot so you would just walk around here and then obviously Hollywood Studios would be down here. You can kind of cut across so you could cut across the lobby go downstairs and then cut across here you wouldn't have to walk all the way around so just keep that in mind. So obviously it's closer to Epcot than the villas but a little further away than Hollywood Studios but not a huge difference. Now we're going to start with the standard two queens. Um, Boardwalk Inn is one that does not have a separate category for king bed. There are king bed rooms, but you're not guaranteed that you cannot book that category. So keep that in mind. But as you can see, Touring Plans does have them. So we'll go over each. So now we're gonna look at standard view two queen beds and these are pretty straightforward um so you're going to see so the second floor there are none on the first floor so you're going to see these right here on the on the second floor and as you can see this is going to be the same level as the lobby and there's a stair there's an elevator right around here and also staircases so it's very easy to get downstairs um i think you know obviously it just depends on you know convenience this would be floor two um, you're really just going to have an overview of the walkway. So it's not going to be, let's see here, this will be a good uh, view right here. And, um, you know, it's just not really anything. It's just going to be of the entryway. So not really a great view, but you're getting the cheapest rate. Let's go up to floor three. Same type of room. It's just obviously going to be a little bit higher. And then you also have these rooms right here. So we'll just take a look right here. And this would obviously be a great room if you wanted to be closer to Epcot. Um, obviously you might, when fireworks return, there's a possibility you might be able to see fireworks from here. Not the best view. Um, but you would obviously have a very close walkway. So if you wanted to, you could probably take the stairs downstairs and you'd be very close to, uh, to Epcot. So if you're going to be spending a lot of time at Epcot, maybe during food and wine, you would want to request one of these rooms. Now let's go up to four, floor four. 
And again, these rooms right here, it's going to be the same type of deal as far as um, the view. So, you know, not a bad view. It's going to be of the carport. Um, and this was obviously from the fifth floor. And then we're going to go up to floor five. Same thing. Um, this room right here does have reports that it is a little larger. Um, so keep that in mind. Let's see what somebody wrote. Room is larger than normal because of the slanted wall. It is a bit noisy because of its location to the elevator. So keep that in mind, but it is a little bit larger. So if you're looking to get a little larger room, look at 5292. But again, really not too many special rooms in that standard view category two queen beds. Now let's take a quick look at the standard view one king bed. Again, this is a not a category you can book but it is something where you can just request a one king bed. So this is the picture that we saw earlier. This is actually from the room 2289. You'll see here, it does have a nice little patio, but you're pretty much facing a fence, but it's not um, too bad. The only thing is I think this room would be fairly dark. So if that doesn't bother you, then it's fine. It would probably be very quiet, but again, it is right next to the entryway and the carport. So maybe it would be loud. Um, no reports there, but just keep that in mind. Go up to floor three and two rooms there and floor four. Now on the fourth floor, there actually is a picture of this room right here. And it's not a bad view. Um, it looks like it has a decent sized balcony overlooking the entryway of the boardwalk. Obviously you're seeing some roofs, but it is a standard view category. And then it is also on the fifth floor as well. I think it just depends on what you're looking for. So if you are looking for um, a king bed, just keep in mind that's where those rooms are going to be located. Next up is the garden view category. So we're gonna first look at the two queen beds and here is where there are some special rooms. So first off, we're gonna look at this room right here and this is the 90 line as we did look before the 92 line. These two rooms, now this one I believe is standard for some reason, but this one is considered um, uh, garden view and it is a little larger. It is oddly shaped, so it has a slanted wall, but it is reported to be a little bit larger. So if you're looking to be very central, close to the lobby, close to a lot of things, um, then you might wanna request 1290. Let's see, um, this room is, was huge. The closet was extra large. The foyer was large. Between the bed and the couch, you have ample room. So there's obviously reports that this is a larger sized room and obviously not a bad view with the location. So 1290 is definitely one of those special rooms. Other rooms, in this category that are special would be these here. Now, these are a little further off. However, if you can see by the way they are um, shaped, they are oddly shaped and therefore a little bit larger. The rooms we're looking at are 1342, 1343, 1345, 1346, 1348, 1349, 1351, and 1352 all of those with 1342 and 1352 being the largest. Now let's look at floor two and you're going to have those same rooms just up with adding a two. So obviously two, um, 2342, 2343, 2345, 2346, 2348, 2349, 2351 and 2352 and then again here 2290 so these are going to be the larger rooms in this category uh, and they're also i mean it's great it's right next to let's see it's really close to the quiet pool um obviously you can't really see it in the distance but you have the little fountain right there and you are on the second floor you have obviously some of these have balconies and then if you look here so you can see the patios that are on the ground floor rooms so personally again I always say we love to be on the ground floor but it this keep in mind that floor two is also on the same floor as the lobby so um, those are those special rooms other than that I don't really have any recommend recommendations obviously um, elevators right around here. So it just depends if you want more convenience, but I, I personally, I would um, request one of the larger size rooms. Now let's move up to floor three. And if you do like a balcony, what we do have is the reports that um, 
in this area right here, rooms 65 to 85 have larger balconies. Now, some of these are considered water view, but the ones that are closer, this is going to be the village green area. These are going to be considered garden. And they also have large balconies and they can see the boardwalk because it's over that village green. So they're considered garden view, but you can see the water. You can, you know, see a lot. We've had this view on the other side on the villas and it's very, very nice. So these have extra large balconies um, <clears throat> and it's 65 to 85. Obviously the garden view would start at 73. And um, other than that, you have still have that 290 line. So this is going to be 3290 that it's going to be a little larger shaped. Moving up to floor four, and again, just that 4290, these are all gonna be garden, and these are going to have that partial um, water view, really large balcony, look at that, and obviously a beautiful view of Village Green and the boardwalk and Crescent Lake. This person put, love this room, close to the elevator, oversized balcony, view of the boardwalk, and able to see um, Magic Kingdom fireworks. So there we go for that one. And then we'll move up to the floor five. I'm not sure if there's any, yep, there are a few. So you still have that 5290. Let's let's see if there's a picture there. Um, 5290, those, this is the floor below. And, uh, but it is a, still a beautiful view. And remember that is going to be a larger size room. And obviously here, a couple rooms as well. Beautiful view of the boardwalk and Crescent Lake. Now we'll look at Garden View One King Bed. Again, this is not a separate category that you can book, but there are a couple rooms that have king beds. So looking, they start on floor two and it is going to be this room right here, which is 2292. This was going to be one of those that is a little bit larger. Let's move up to floor three. And there's none on floor three. Floor four, none on floor four. So it doesn't look like there's going to be that many in this category. So if you booked a garden view, know that there's any one a king bed, there's only, it appears to be only two rooms. The other one would be 5308. So not as much choices. So if you book garden view, expect that you're going to get a room with two queen beds. Now let's look at the water view two queen beds category. And this is obviously gonna start on floor three. And there is one special room here. And it is this line right here, which is the 259 line. So this is going to be 3259. As you can see, it's a little oddly shaped and it is a little larger than the other rooms. Beautiful view of Crescent Lake and the boardwalk. Um, you got some beautiful pictures here. And then this panoramic view right here, gorgeous, really great view when the boardwalk. Just keep in mind, it could be a little loud at night, but you could just sit out here and people watch, which is always a lot of fun. So that is floor three. Other than that, um, pretty much these are going to be the ones that have um, obviously 65, uh, 265 and the 267 line. These two right here are gonna have larger balconies as well. Um, I would still prefer to be on this side of the boardwalk though when you're paying for the water view. We'll go up to floor four, nothing on floor four. And then floor five, there's some right here. So this is obviously going to give you a view a little higher up, beautiful view of the boardwalk. So. Personally, I would probably want to be on floor three, just facing the boardwalk, um, but that's just me. But I think these are going to be wonderful as well, and they'll have beautiful views of the boardwalk and Crescent Lake. Now, if you book water view and you're looking for a king bed, there are, know that there are only two rooms that have the king bed, and they are 3269, 3271. They are going to have larger size balconies, but just know that um, you're more likely going to get two queen beds, so keep that in mind. But if you do request, it will be one of these two rooms. Next up is something unique to Disney's Boardwalk Inn, and here it's called the Garden Suite. When you book through Disney, it's considered the outer building garden room, and it's these little, like I call them honeymoon cottages, um, and they sleep only two, two adults. Um, they're very unique, as you can see here, and they're, they're like these lofts. So the bed uh, is on the second floor. They sleep two adults. They're considered like honeymoon cottages. Very, very cute. Um, they're just run here. There's only 14 of them. So you're going to run from 1201 to 1215. And if you look right here, you can kind of see 
um, it's got like this little garden and you have your own little entryway. And as you can see here, here they are. So you have this own little entryway, very, very cute. Um, I would love, and then you have a little Mickey right there. So very, very cute. Personally, I, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these. Um, if I were requesting it, I would probably request this one on the end just because it would give you easy access to go to Epcot. But I don't think you're gonna have, you know, I don't think any one of these is going to be a bad choice. Personally, I would just want to be on the end, but that's just me. But I think these are adorable and I would love to stay in one of these one day. Next up, we have the two bedroom suite and these are all going to be on the fourth floor. So you can see here, one, two, three, four. I think this one is mismatched. So it's, uh, one, two, three, four. And you can see here, um, this one is, you can see actually, pictures of the little gardens that I was just talking about, the garden suites. Um, I don't think it can go e wrong with either one of these. I think they're all gonna be very nice. Personally though, if fireworks resume, I would probably request this one right here, 5205. There's probably gonna be tr some trees here, but you might be able to see some fireworks through the trees once fireworks do return. But um, I don't think, there's only four of them, so I think it's really what's available. Um, obviously these rooms are gonna give you really nice views of the little gardens. It just depends on what you prefer. Um, this one is probably going to be, obviously you would want to probably take the stairs. This is going to be the closest to the elevator. So it's really what depends on what works for your family. Next up, we have the Sonora VIP, VP suite. And you can see right here, it's on floor four. So right here, and then the this one right here is considered the Steeplechase Presidential Suite. So they are both right on the boardwalk on the fourth floor. So, and there's only one of each. So you don't really get a choice, but if you book it, that's what you're getting. Now we're gonna move on to the standard club level rooms. And you'll see here, they are all on the fourth floor. So my understanding is that the concierge is around this area right here. So um, keep in mind, it just depends on where you wanna be. Obviously, I think the best bet is going to be this room right here, which is the one that is oddly shaped and that is going to be um, 42.59. And this person said, um, Oh, actually, so this one actually says it has a king bed with a fold-out chair, not a couch. Um, but this is the room that is a little big. But obviously, that is where these notes come in handy because this is not a two queen bed. This has a king bed, but it's still a beautiful view. And obviously, it is a little oddly shaped. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking to that. These are going to be queen beds. I would try and stick around this area right here just because if you want to be close to the concierge, but still not going to be too far off um but and also it just depends if you don't mind and you want to people watch then obviously being right on the boardwalk is going to be very convenient if you do want it to be a little quieter and you're concerned about the noise then maybe request one of these rooms right here um obviously if you want to be on the garden but i think if you're paying that price personally i would want a view at least a partial view of the boardwalk so i would try and get on the, um, what would be the odd side, the odd number side of the building. And the last room we'll be going over is the club level deluxe. This sleeps up to six adults and it is club level is, uh, the deluxe room is larger than a standard room and there's 10 of them. So you'll see there are five on floor three and five on floor four. Um, they're gonna be the same rooms, but I would recommend requesting to be on the fourth floor because that is the same level as the concierge room and the lounge. So you'd wanna be, you don't wanna have to go down a floor to go to the lounge. Um, and then I would also re request um, 4257 or 4255, just because it would be closer to the lounge. Um, obviously this is going to be a little further, but it's not a huge walk, so it's still not very, very far. Um, I think any one of these, I would just definitely request to be on the fourth floor if you do book a deluxe club level room. Now I'm gonna show you how to request your room using the Terrain Plans website. So here I am, I'm at my, my dashboard and this is my sample trip that I have plugged in and we are staying at the Disney's Boardwalk Inn, obviously. And I'm gonna click Request Room. 
So I'm going to, and it's going to bring me to the map we were just at. So let's stream. Let's say we have booked the club level deluxe room and I'm going to show matching rooms and now it's going to bring. So I'm going to go to the fourth floor because I did say I want to be on the fourth floor. And let's say I'm going to request this room right here, which is room 4257. Yep. That's the view I want. So I'm going to go up here and it says, click here to make the request for this room. Click here. 4257 and now it says I am requesting room 4257 however you're not done you got to configure the room request so I'm going to click that and let's see okay there we go there we go so there's my reservation number all my information now it's going to put and I'm just going to say here any additional information um, we want to be on the fourth floor there so that in additional information is where you're going to put whatever you want we want to be on the ground floor we want to be close to the lobby we want to be close to the elevator whatever is important to you put in that additional information that way if the room that you request is not available the room assigner knows what you're looking for that's what i always do and if you have a couple things that you're looking for list them in order of priority so there you have it now it is now 30 days they will attempt to this to send this room request starting 30 days prior to your check-in date and that's it that's all you need to do and those are my best and worst rooms at disney's boardwalk inn so there you have it those are my best and worst rooms at disney's boardwalk inn resort i always get that confused um you know it really just depends on what works for your family and where your location but make sure you use um touring plans to make your request um, it makes it so much easier. I know a lot of people think that they don't wanna pay the $18, but it's an annual subscription. It doesn't just give you access to this feature, it gives you access to their touring plans, which is what their website is all about, but it also gives you access to their Lines app, which is amazing, and it is so much more accurate than um, my Disney experience when you're using it in the park. It is what I use in the park because it will tell you, it's saying 70 minutes, but the wait is, usually, is actually 10, and it's gonna save you so much time in the park, so that $18, Plus, I will say, having a good room, having a good location that works for your family is going to make a difference in your vacation. It may not make or break a vacation, but it's just gonna make it easier. So if you like ground floor, if you like certain things, definitely make sure you make that request in. Um, I they don't guarantee it, but it is going to make it so much easier to get the request that you want. So with that, if you like this video, click like, click and subscribe. That way you get a notification every time I post a new video. Bye everyone.